Hi welcome to today's episode. In this episode we would be talking about jellyfish bloom. When huge numbers of plants or animals appear suddenly, scientists call it a bloom. In some areas of the world, millions of jellyfish can swarm together, and these blooms cause problems for fisheries and tourism. If you've been at the beach or on a boat at some point when it seemed like jellyfish were everywhere, then maybe you have even seen a jellyfish bloom. Jellyfish blooms are substantial growths in the population of species under the phylacnidaria and comb jellies. Blooms may take place naturally as a result of ocean and wind patterns, ecosystem shifts, and jellyfish behaviors, though their occurrence is thought to have increased during the last several decades in near-shore regions and shallow seas across the globe. Changes in ocean conditions including eutrophication, hypoxia, rising ocean temperatures, and coastal development, among others, are thought to be the main causes of increasing jellyfish blooms. Little is known regarding how future environmental conditions will affect jellyfish blooms, though this is a growing field of research. Jellyfish blooms significantly impact ecological community composition and structure by reducing available prey for higher predators. Blooms also significantly alter carbon, nitrogen, and phosphorus cycling, shifting the availability to microbial communities. Recent blooms have commonly overlapped with multiple industries, reducing fisheries catch, clogging fishing nets and power plant pipes, and overwhelming popular beach destinations, leading to closures. The frequency of jellyfish blooms is currently being investigated to determine if global trends are increasing as climate patterns shift. Eutrophication, hypoxia, rising global ocean temperatures, coastal development, and overfishing are suspected to be stimulating the growth of jellyfish populations. Eutrophication, for example, provides an excess of nutrients, which leads to abnormally large algal blooms that support rapid jellyfish population growth. Algae that are not consumed eventually expire and are consumed by the microbial community, which may lead to hypoxia. Jellyfish can tolerate hypoxic conditions where more sensitive species cannot. Cultural eutrophication and the increasing hypoxia in the Gulf of Mexico, for example, appears to have also increased jellyfish populations. Jellyfish conglomeration on an artificial surface, spring and summer months typically have more jellyfish blooms because the warmer water temperatures cause jellyfish to reach sexual maturity more quickly. Rising global ocean temperatures may also contribute to the increasing jellyfish populations. Overfishing of jellyfish predators releases jellyfish populations from top-down control. For example, reduced competition from small pelagic fish in the Black Sea due to fishing has led to an apparent increase in polyp proliferation, the earliest developmental stage of jellyfish. Coastal development has also created physical changes to coastal ecosystems that favor rapid jellyfish growth. Hard structures provide more space for jellyfish polyps to adhere to and develop on. Floating artificial structures increase shaded substrate area jellyfish polyps thrive on. Between 10,000 and 100,000 jellyfish polyps per square meter were directly or indirectly attached to artificial structures, as counted in one investigation. Both increased substrate and nitrogen concentration in harbors favor higher polyp population densities. Jellyfish also thrive in dammed areas because they are more tolerant to variable salinity. Jellyfish blooms may change the level of carbon, nitrogen and phosphorus in the ocean. As the number of jellyfish increases they consume organic containing CN and P this fast growth causes other organisms to have less food. This limits the transfer of energy of CN and P up the food chain, instead shifting the trophic transfer to the microbial community. Large populations of jellyfish contain CN and P. Then move to another area and emit them through excretion, mucus production and decomposition. Leading to one form of pollution to the sea of increasing gases in water. Jellyfish blooms are generally short-lived, collapsing from food limitations, changes in water temperature or oxygen levels, or completing their life cycle. The death, sinking, and decomposition of jellyfish is rapid and leads to a mass release of dissolved and particulate, organic and inorganic matter, in the water column or seafloor, creating a significant source of food for the microbial community. Sinking and decomposition rates can vary for jellyfish depending on water temperature and depth. Some jellyfish decompose before reaching the seafloor, releasing organic matter into the water column. Others fall to the floor and then decompose, enriching the sediment with organic matter. In both scenarios the organic matter from the jellyfish is consumed by the bacterial community who simultaneously reduce available oxygen, at times contributing to hypoxia. In some cases, the jelly falls are too large for consumption, and organic matter accumulates on the seafloor, creating a physical barrier for diffusion mechanisms, reducing oxygen transport into sediments. 
The result is an increase of ammonium in the surrounding water from bacterial remineralization and an increase of phosphate in the sediment from low oxygen redox reactions. However, when the decomposition creates low oxygen zones, the ammonium cannot be utilized by primary production. Similarly, the low oxygen zones created by microbial respiration further shifts the consumption to the bacterial community, where most macrofauna prefer oxygenated environments, again limiting the energy transfer to higher trophic levels. Large jellyfish blooms can disrupt fisheries operations by decreasing catch quality and overwhelming fishing gear. Jellyfish blooms can potentially have detrimental impacts on fisheries by impairing the recruitment of larval fish and outcompeting economically significant fish species. In overexploited fisheries, this can prevent recovery of target fish species and result in the creation of an alternative stable state. Blooms generally coincide with a decrease in fish catch, which results in decreased profits and fewer jobs. These problems along with additional fuel consumption and lost man hours have caused major economic losses for fishing fleets. In contrast, some blooms could potentially benefit commercial fisheries. One example is found in the Chesapeake Bay estuary, where evidence suggests the presence of sea nettles has a positive effect on oyster populations. When abundant, the sea nettles are major predators of tenifers, ravenous predators that can compete with oysters. Commercial harvesting of jellyfish has grown in Southeast Asia, primarily driven by the increased demand for jellyfish in some Asian cuisines. Jellyfish fisheries could be a strategy for controlling blooms, yet these fisheries still remain small-scale and have not yet expanded to markets outside of Asia. Negative effects of jellyfish blooms are also felt in the aquaculture industry. Jellyfish occasionally find their way into sea pens in industrial fish farms and have been recorded to injure and kill fish. Even short-term exposure to jellyfish can be extremely harmful within fish farm enclosures. Power plants are often built on coasts and draw seawater for industrial cooling water. Jellyfish can clog the water intakes of power plants, which can decrease energy production or cause shutdowns. While total shutdown due to jellyfish clogging is uncommon, revenue losses can be significant. Not all clogs lead to shutdowns, though even minor intake perturbations can result in lost revenue. Some measures are available to prevent jellyfish-related interruptions. Power plants in Japan use bubble curtain devices which produce air bubbles near intake valves which lift the jellyfish, reducing the number that are sucked into the pumps. In coastal areas where tourism is ubiquitous, jellyfish blooms often present a risk to recreational activities due to beach closures and stinging swimmers. During blooms, the incidence of jellyfish stings becomes much more common. In parts of the Mediterranean Sea the problem has been very pronounced. Stings were more commonly reported when wind conditions were blowing perpendicular to shore, which generally brought jellyfish into closer proximity with tourists. Scientific articles that support abnormal jellyfish blooms are more attractive to mainstream media, causing a dramatization of jellyfish bloom events in the public eye. Disproportionate coverage of bloom events changes public perception about the presence of jellyfish, which could lead to the impacts on tourism. Jellyfish is food. Due to the outbreak of jellyfish all over the world with warmer water, Asia countries start to harvest jellyfish as an alternative rather than fish because of their larger and more rigid bodies and because their toxins are harmless to humans. In some countries, such as China, Japan, and Korea, jellyfish are a delicacy. The jellyfish is dried to prevent spoiling. In China, processed jellyfish are desalted by soaking in water overnight and eaten cooked or raw. The dish is often served shredded with a dressing of oil, soy sauce, vinegar and sugar, or as a salad with vegetables. In Japan, cured jellyfish are rinsed, cut into strips and served with vinegar as an appetizer. Remember to stay a safe distance if you are lucky enough to see a jellyfish or a jellyfish bloom. Do keep a lookout in the water you are swimming in, in order to avoid being stinged by a jellyfish. Then you can think about taking a picture or video. Remember social distancing is important as we are globally trying to fight the coronavirus. If you like what I am doing please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell. Feel free to drop a comment down below or request on the next sea creature you like to see on this channel.